A number of my clients ask me if I have any suggestions about how to help people change that are just pretty rigid. And I always point them to the same resource, this book. I don't know if you picked it up, if it's on your shelf. I recommend it a lot and often it's not on people's shelves. Influencer, the power to change anything. What's really great about it is they offer a model of how to impact change on a personal team, organizational group level, as well as organizational and structural. And that's what we really need. And oftentimes the question that I'm asked is at various levels of how people are trying to impact change. And so let me walk you through really briefly the model and hopefully you'll find some insights about how you can impact some of the challenges that you're facing in your personal or professional life. So the first piece to understand is that no matter what level we're trying to impact change, we have to impact it on two levels. One is motivation and the other is ability. When we're motivated and we're able, then we can make change. However, the way in which we do that, depending on if it's at the individual team or structural organizational level is different. So when it comes to personal change, for example, I was working with a team of individuals. My, my whole team actually was trying to support them. So it was a group of individuals that were incredibly stressed. In fact, we write about it in, in chapter four of our book. And they were having a hard time being able to see anything good about each other and their entire team. In fact, they complained and they were pretty negative, taking a lot of sick time, way often that they were finding ways to improve their situation. And so as you can probably imagine, ability and motivation felt really rather low with this group. And yet on an individual level, what we were trying to do is impact their motivation in the situation. And specifically when it comes to motivation, it's making the undesirable desirable. And in the case of recognition, it is, it's undesirable to recognize people in a team where you are so frustrated, so stressed, feel so undervalued by your colleagues and by other departments. Why would you bother to put out your energy and your effort? And yet, how do we make it actually more desirable? And that's where ability comes in, where we surpass our limits. Because you see, this team had lost faith that they even knew how to be positive about their situation again. And so what we started to do was offer them very small snippet strategies. Teach, we could teach it in five minutes or less of how to do something related to acknowledgement within themselves and each other in the team, how to give and receive feedback, how to be able to make suggestions so that people could hear them, little tiny suggestions that they could try. And all of a sudden those things that were undesirable, such as giving feedback, such as recognizing a colleague, felt desirable and they got past some of their own limits. And so then as a team, they started to build an energy. And that's where, again, when we look at motivation, it's harnessing peer pressure. As people are trying these new strategy, it becomes now at least 50% of the team is making an effort. When you have that many people who are making an effort, all of a sudden being in the minority and being negative doesn't feel quite so fun anymore. And so the other piece of course is ability. Strength in numbers creates ability. We can achieve so much more as a team when we feel like we actually have the capability and the capacity to do this. When we're all practicing these strategies and there's some peer pressure about that and we are starting to make, have some success, that's now at a group level that we're able to start to make change. That further builds our energy. And then finally, at a structural level, when it comes to motivation, it's designing reward systems and building in accountability. What they decided to do at track at their daily stand-up meetings was how many acknowledgements did you receive the day before? So there's some accountability, very visible way of measuring it because they realized that without acknowledgements on an ongoing basis, they were gonna go right back to how they felt. So on the days when that wasn't happening, their energy level, their support, their passion, their commitment went way down. And they wanted to try to maintain it being at least moderate, if not high. And so they started to, to notice and monitor monitor how much that was happening and they would reward they would they would spontaneously people could come up with their own acknowledgments for people such as most supportive colleague this uh, of the week or most uh, creative supportive comment when a client was yelling at them on the phone you know so just fun ways to be able to acknowledge themselves and each other and then finally when it comes to ability at a structural level is to change the environment so they had to fit, they started physically tracking it, but also they started to use 
bulletin boards and whiteboards around the uh, department that weren't being used as spaces to acknowledge each other even when they couldn't speak with each other in the moment or to acknowledge the shift before or the shift coming in when they wouldn't even necessarily be seeing each other making eye contact. So in other words, by harnessing and building motivation and ability at an individual team and, or, and group level and to change some actual structures, this team went from being the least satisfied in the entire organization to the second most satisfied in only two months. So that was how we were able to build a recognition culture where people willingly gave each other feedback by harnessing some pretty simple strategies that was able to create something that this team thought was not ever going to be possible. What other suggestions have you had that have successfully worked that have been able to help change very difficult behavior at any of those levels? Please feel free to comment it. I'd love to share your ideas with all of the people who are reading this blog and blog. My name's Sarah McDaniel. Be well and be great. Mm -hmm.